Oh. Edmund is here too from Thurston County. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. All right, guys. So uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I know we are we have some people missing uh, for the uh, ownership because they had to work. Uh, one of them got, got called to work last second. Uh, the Gulls, uh, uh, Harbor Gulls owner, um, uh, Eric. Uh, so he's going to be joining in later. Um, I'm going to be sending the recording to some of the teams. I'm talking to Northwest United. Uh, I was talking to Sky, but uh, Jamie does not want to do it this year. Um, and we have a couple other teams I'm talking to as well. Uh, my other program, IDT, Intense Detail Training, is interested. I'm going to hire a coach and have them do their own thing. Possibly they're joining as well. So I am representing uh, them uh, as well as Gala um, uh, for now until they get their leadership group. Uh, we have Edmund here, I think, uh, from Thurston County. Edmund, you're here, right? Yes. Okay, welcome, man. Hello. And we got uh, David from uh, Venaci All-Stars, which is uh, probably one of the most talented group of players uh, in Washington State. Uh, welcome, David. Thank you, thank you. And uh, Bellevue, the uh, men's uh, UPSL full champion. Uh, hopefully, they're going to go all the way to national championship. Uh, we have three representatives from them. Uh, the uh, the woman's uh, in charge of women is Austin is here. Uh, the ownership, uh, Laura and uh, Anastasio is here. Also, Anastasio is the men's uh, conference lead uh, for our league. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Hello. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Taji. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So... Uh, I wanted to, so this is a little bit of, of the updated with some stats, um, uh, why we want to do the women's program, why I've been always pushing uh, for women's soccer to grow in Washington State. We're going to kind of talk about that. Uh, UPSL is, um, I wanted to try this fall with the men's. I jumped in last second. I didn't know if uh, we were going to have a team for fall, but I jumped in with eight players and I put some of my U19s and we we started the league. Um, we we had a really good second half of the season. After we start recruiting some players, we we always play organized soccer. But we we did really well. But the one of the most important thing was me to see the UPSL as a as a unit. Anastasia did a great job as a conference lead. I have uh, some things to learn from him. I would like to meet him here and there. I we're gonna set up a meet soon with him. Um, but. The organization is just not about Washington State drama uh, and possible clicks with each other is more on the national state. Uh, so what what we cannot be dealing with in here, we can always reach out to other arms of uh, UPSL's uh, you know contacts out of the state. Uh, you have a, a person about discipline. You have a person about scheduling. You have a person about refereeing. You have a person about all these things marketing all these things are different angles from outside the state so you feel like you you belong to a you know organization that is bigger than ourselves bigger than washington and washington's drama that we have to deal with sometimes uh i, I really like that and my experience has been great uh there was a time that uh we were uh, falsely had a claim against us that you know we didn't have a, a medic and we provide the proof. We find pay the pay the fine right away. But I love the fact that there's fines about this stuff. And then we pro provide proof that we did have a medic there, a trainer there, and and right away uh, they did the process and we got our money back. And and there are teams that did not follow their protocols and they get fines. And those are the biggest things about you in Washington State uh, leagues that we don't see. Uh, we don't see consequences. So the teams act like Sunday League teams. If you want to call this a semi-pro level, and, and U.S. soccer actually announced UPSL in the same level as USL2, kind of like burst their bubble about spending so much money. Uh, but it's really exciting uh, for us to be in a league that is recognized for U.S. soccer uh, and FIFA recognizing us as a league uh, in the fourth division level, so it's very exciting for the for the teams. Um, unless you have a question, I'm going to move on to the next thing, guys.
Everybody can hear me clearly, though, right? It's yeah. good. All right. Great. Thank you. Uh, all right. So let's go to uh, the next one. Uh, I kind of explained this to you guys. We're going to talk about some of the cost and commitment. Uh, uh, Jan was supposed to come in. I'm sure that he'll join and it's uh, in a bit. Uh, our, Amir was not available today. He's flying to England. So he's the, the woman's uh, director, national director. Great guy. Great story. Uh, started from nothing to made one of the biggest leagues. Uh, so it's very exciting for us to uh, work with Amir in a national state too. Uh, so I, I added some of the stuff. It was interesting to me, some of the uh, numbers. Why didn't women's leagues uh, work in the past in Washington State? There's so many tried in the last 20 years and they all failed. They did not do well uh, because it was a one-man show trying to run everything kind of thing. And it's it just didn't work. So, but potential there is insane in in Washington. So, uh, for the most popular professional sports, let's look at that. Uh, women's is only eight percent. So we need to grow this in United States to be able to grow this. This uh, UPSL like leagues is critical for growing this uh, game in sports uh, for women. Uh, if you can see that. Uh, number one is still the women's uh, uh, NSCA basketball. And uh, we are only on the 8%. So I, I think there is a lot of growth that we can have. But these numbers doesn't really represent the youth sports. So um, if you can see that, I hope you, it's clear to you guys. And let's go to the next one. So this is insane. Like the the highest that this is the the uh, and not only United States but the worldwide too, women's game record for uh, professional sports uh, is uh, second place is the Seattle Rain game against Washington Spirit in Lumen Field, uh, twenty twenty three, uh, thirty four thousand people watched that. So there is so much potential in Washington for fan base. So that if if something like that record is broken. Is definitely there is a lot of fan base support possible, uh, you know. If we can kind of jump into that uh, lane, it will be very helpful for us to actually utilize that as well. Another one is the fastest uh, uh, growing youth sport uh, in the Western United States is actually Washington uh, for soccer. So we have uh, one hundred ten thousand youth soccer players in Washington State. And Oregon is the second uh, fastest growing one. And of course, uh, California is the third one. And also California has the most uh, youth soccer players. So the, the interesting thing about this stat is the potential of Washington State, how fast it's growing. The soccer player numbers are growing is insane. And we also have high school teams that was in 2022 is in the top uh, top three in a in, uh, whole United States. And we have, uh, right now, I looked at the stats. It's not because finalized because there's still state cups going on and stuff, but we have a lot of teams in the 100, top 100. So um, it's really exciting for Washington State to kind of utilize this uh, this potential. And we haven't been. And we had uh, Cascadia tried it, but it's like some youth clubs doing whatever they want in that league. And uh, it's just not having any consequences. The girls know that. Uh, the woman wants to have a place they, they can feel uh, safe. They can feel, uh, you know, this is an organized competition. They they feel like they're doing something good. If they're college players, especially, they want to have a place they can grow as a player and keep in shape as well. And and college connection is very important. And and I've been talking to a lot of college coaches about this new league in Oregon and in Washington. And I'll be having a meeting with them separately about this and uh, and to connect with them and kind of invite them to uh, come and watch the games and, and get more attention and invite their players. A lot of them, at least 80% of the college coaches I talk to, and in the, the B license clinic, I talked to about 12 of them there. And and total of, I'll be saying probably 28, 29. And honestly, like 80, 85% of them is all about UPSL coming to the Washington, coming to Oregon, 
to have competition there. They're 100% supportive of the spring and summer league. They're not very interested in the fall league, obviously, for that. But this is very exciting that so many of the college coaches and top-level college coaches, too, are very supportive of having a league that can keep the girls in shape and improve as well. And, and a lot of these coaches know me as, as I'm, I'm an educator. So I, I want to improve players' individual basis, and I want to pick on those uh, strengths to make it even better and weaknesses to, to kind of get rid of that. So when we have coaches like that and we focus on coaches like that too, uh, I think that's going to grow the game even more. So we have a plan to not only start the league, but we have a plan to make – things uh, better for uh, college players. I think potential for the woman, in my opinion, can grow so fast and so strong. We can go national level and very be successful at national level, in my opinion, if we get to that level. I'm not sure if it's going to be my club or somebody else's club, but I know we have the potential to do so. And I want I want my club to be a part of that. And, and that's why we, we are joining. And uh, that's why I'm doing extra work. This is not like a, a full-time job or even rare, barely, and as we can tell you as well, a, a part-time job. It's it's about really passion of the game and trying to grow the game. And you're giving a lot of your own time and I'm, I'll be giving a lot of my own time to grow this game. So it's not really a financial benefit for us uh, in that department. So uh, do you have any questions or any comments about this, guys? I, I I agree with you, Dodgy, on, on everything for the numbers of change. I think that the Washington State is very popular in the game of soccer. And um, obviously, I'm saying that because of our journey that when we started back in, what, 2021, um, you know, we tried to do a women's in two, 2022. Um, there wasn't very much support or any backbone to anything structural-wise. And I think that those that are putting the passion and love into it, you know, you could say part-time, but Dodgy, I know you're over there drinking a lot of those sodas and, <laughs> and whatnot to get things going. And I'm on the same boat with you, Dodgy. And I love it. I love it that it's not just the men, it's the women that deserve it too. And I think that we show sponsors and um, investors and whatnot, that it's not just a one, you know, uh, gender sport. It's a, a two of them coming in and showing the passion and love and the movement and the voice is going to make an impact. I believe that the impact is the voice of the women and the guys coming together and doing something great. Like other clubs, like, uh, didn't Ballard, don't they have a women's team now? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there's other clubs that are, uh, they have, uh, Tacoma stars, they have their women's too, but, but now with this, it's, it's the pathway. It's the pathway from even from our side, right? Where we're at, we're three hours away from you guys, almost three hours, depending. Um, you guys are doing it. You're starting it. CPL tried it. It wasn't structural well to being disciplined to showing the kids anything, because if we see from starting into the rec leagues here locally, um, nothing's changed in structural wise. And so if we get these pieces down to, to the A to Z, I know that it's going to be very successful and I'm excited. And I know that I've spoken to the women already about this and they're just like looking at each other, like they're ready. So let's change these numbers and let's, let's be vocal. Cause in Wenatchee, we're right in the middle between you guys. And then now the EPL was trying to do a women's. So it's, 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 a uh, it's in a vision that we all have because we love the game, but Let's let's uh let's pinpoint it to where it's actually gonna do something great for them. Obviously, we want it to be, you know, I want the all stars to be like you know what we've already accomplished, right? But the yeah. names for these kids, like for our town, we have the Leon brothers. Finally, we got some brothers out there doing work, but we need more for Wenatchee. So I appreciate you, Dodgy, and the things that you're doing from leaving the CPL to where you're at now in the foundation. Um and so, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dodgy. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Austin, uh, Laura, Anastasia for Bellevue, you guys want to edit anything?
Edmund? Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I'm, I agree. Um, I feel like the women have always gotten the short end of the deal. And then we did the Cascadia. We had a, we started a team this year and we did Cascadia and it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. And then it doesn't even go anywhere anyway. So, I mean, yeah. it's great for them to have something to play in, but it's, there's no meaning behind it. So yeah, girls are very uh, goal oriented, you know, so they, they yeah. want it. What is, what's next? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's important to give them a national stage for sure. Uh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's a big thing for my girls right now on our pages. Like after our, our last event and, they're like, what's next? I'm like, I'm trying to get you a friendly, you know? And then they're like, okay, well, if we don't have that, what's next? You know? And the biggest thing from the women's, from the friendly that we got against uh, uh, the the Mitch's club, Washington Premier. Uh, we interviewed them, you know, we talked to them. Like, so how do you feel? We feel amazing. This is amazing. Okay, so why didn't you go to the photographer and the videographers when we told you at halftime at the beginning of the game? Well, we're not used to it. Yeah. yeah, we're not used to it. And so um, we got to get them used to it. That's the thing now. You know, what I've been given in my vision and stuff is that they, they have to get used to it. And if they don't want to get used to it, then maybe they shouldn't be in the locker room. If yeah. they don't want to get used to it, maybe they shouldn't be around the organization. So um, that's a key point. Mitch, he kudos, great, great guy. Um, yep. He gave us our opportunity to shine. Uh, and we shined and we shined and we shined and we went to Nisa and we shined and we continue shining regardless. And so, um, you know, UPS, uh, L is trying to do their part now. Now you do your part. And if Mitch keeps going, which he's going to now over here at EPL Wa, now there's three. So yeah. I, I believe in this. I believe in it because someone from the CPL came over and now they see it because they have a great heart for the game. So let's 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 show these girls. Let's the I think the girls are the key to the men because the men are not disciplined. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Some of them and, are. Some of them and, are. And, and in my in my experience, uh, much more smarter too. Like when it comes to like understanding the game and uh, maybe not the intensity, but understanding the game. So this is so exciting, David. You you're gonna be a big addition. Like your your vision in a long term is gonna, I think, kind of push everybody, and I, I really, uh, I'm really excited about that. So, I'm gonna give the the uh, turn to Edmund. Do you have anything to say, Edmund? For Thurston County, by the way, guys. I appreciate the help and uh, welcome to the group. But uh, I think it's a good thing for the community, you know. I know artists are doing their best uh, with what they have, but a lot of female soccer players got left behind. They end up having only one place to play besides Coed or go all the way to Seattle. Mm -hmm. But I think with UPSL in the area, I think it's uh, it's going to be good for the ladies. Because I know I reached out to Evergreen and some of the other colleges, and they took me on my offer. They showed up, and we just have to try to build on that, you know. Because at least I have the college here helping out this year with the women. But unfortunately, the men, they didn't want to help out in the men's section for now. But hopefully with the women in, in there, they're going to help promote GPS a little bit better in the area. Yeah. Hey, thanks for your effort, Edmund, to uh, communicate with colleges. That's that's very important for, I think, women's soccer. And I, I think that's going to be the key thing for us to start this, to focus on the college players. And then also the adult players in the leagues, in indoor leagues and stuff like that too. Uh, yeah. And then we're going to be focusing on that. Um, do you, uh, who else is here? Austin, did you want to say anything? Um, I mean, lost been said already that I I completely agree with. Um, I mean, my experience with the UPSL uh, and what makes us stand out against um, other similar leagues in the state uh, is that one, it's a lot more organized. Um, and that's not me trying to take a dig at any, uh, anybody else, but uh, it's, it's a lot more organized. Um, I mean, 
even a chance to make national playoffs is amazing for 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 the girls for exposure uh for if you want to go to the colleges or even the higher stage like a super league or nwsl um and then also it it's they're they're very especially within the last couple of years they're very uh diligent about upkeeping stats and like individual stats and which is which is also very uh very helpful for for those players that are trying to reach the next level um and i think that upsl is very player centric like it's focused on the player focus on the girls uh, and then trying to make them uh, get them on to the to the next level you know and that's what that, that's what i love about this league I, I agree. I, I 100% agree. And then the bottom line is, uh, I, I love Mitch. I respect him a lot. And uh, it's not about just necessarily him or anything. Like just when it's it's an organization, it's a national state, you know, stage. I mean, and we 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 can reach out to so many different people when we have an issue. And when we have it, even if you have a problem with one leadership, you can go to another leadership. So do, to be able to have that kind of a community, and and to be able to uh, really have consequences to things when you are not following or team is not following. Like last year, we were in top division. Uh, like uh, Snowmi still had two times, they did not bring rosters to the game. And their management wasn't even there until like uh, 20, 25 minutes into it. And then Crossfire did not bring rosters. And their parents didn't want to pay uh, the pl players, parents, and fans, because they thought that it was a friendly game. The uh, the crossfire management did not even tell them they're in a league. They thought they were playing friendly games for the U17, U18 teams, the academy teams, before traveling, you know, playing friendly games against adult teams. So just think about that organization-wise. Like uh, people are not even aware they're in a league, and they they're not bringing rosters. Out. It, w it wasn't structured. We know that, you know, and I, I give him I give him thumbs up for the teams he had in it. You know why? Because yeah. we we're we brought those teams in it. Yes. So yeah, no, I, like I said, I so have a that, lot of respect so for him. If, if, he, if he gets his papers together like anybody else, you know, um, he's going to have clubs. You know, if we if we stayed there and look, it started off with eight teams, Dodgy. Yeah. And look what it went to. Yeah. And he, yeah. It was too much. It was too much, obviously. So, it it was the power. So, yeah. what it is now is is get the women's going and the structural of everything that's going on for the soccer around us and for every star player that we have. Let's get them on front of a camera and tell because a lot of them aren't used to it. Let's yeah. get them on front of the camera and not worry about us. Obviously, we we need to put ourselves out there. And so, moving forward. Let's just get our pilas, how I say it. You know what I mean? Get everything put together so we can see it I love, too. I love that. Like, honestly, the, the point I was trying to get to, David, is the fact that even if they get everything straighted and organized, it's still, there is no next level after that. So I think UPSL opening the door to regional and then the national championship and as well as supporting the successful clubs with money. So not yeah. just that you're looking for sponsorships and looking for fan base, but if you are such a successful program, you can go get money prizes. And, and we're going to be talking about it in a bit about that. So next thing I was going to real quick uh, talk about is the national stage, of course, is a big thing. We just uh, kind of talked about that. And marketing, our our focus power. So is marketing. So uh, I want to do, uh, once the league is set up and everybody registers, I want to do uh, a couple meetings like this to focus on marketing for each club and how can we help each other? Uh, how can we market each other? How can we get the word out there? How can we use our connections? Like, for example, I'll give you a, a dumb example. So I I have coach friends coaching in Minachi, as well as David, of course, that knows everybody. But I can also reach out to them saying that, hey, let's just support this program. Let's go up there. Do, do you guys have businesses? Do your you know... One of my coach friends, uh, uh, his wife owns a business there. Can you support Winachi? Let's support this league. They support this women's program up there growing because you guys have so much talent up there. Can we do that? The same vice versa, right? Like Bellevue area. 
and 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 uh, Thurston County area. I have a lot of coach friends that we can actually have these connections. Not my, just me. You guys have it too. And uh, David has maybe players uh, that is playing college here, and they just kind of stayed here. Maybe David can tell them, hey, if you're living in like Snohomish County, go try out for uh, Gala FC, and they have a good program. And David has a people in the east side say Bellevue is a good program. Go try out there and play, and we'll see you guys in the league. I like that. This this uh, marketing is not about just money, but marketing the name, the the product, showcasing the, the player, showcasing the player over in somewhere yes, else. Yes, exactly. So the map, the move down the map. That's how we can actually have a meeting once we register everybody and come up with a plan. So organization wise. Mm -hmm. That's where it starts, and we also already have a national stage. We just need to make our site as organized as possible. We will have up and downs like every other league for sure. I will have my mistakes for sure, but the fact that we have a national stage to go over me and to make things better when I have a question, I can go somebody else is a big deal. So I cannot be there is no way I can come up with every solution, every answer myself. You know, I I like to think about myself as a, a intelligent guy, smart guy, but there are so many things about the organization, uh, like UPSL, that you know that I will have questions and I would need the experience for myself. So I I will not I will never be dishonest with people about things like this. So I will always try to grow as a person myself, and try to grow the league in the process. I think the mo most important thing, like it says in the last part, why in a women's league work in the past national stage. We talked about it, marketing. We talk about it, organization, but consistency is the number one thing. So once we start, we do this marketing meeting, we come up with plans. We come up with maybe camps to raise money to make it easier for whatever we're going to do. We're going to have to be consistently doing it every year. And that's why I'm going to try to do to make things as consistent as possible, communicating with the referees, uh, communicating with the leadership and, and try to we are not going to make everybody happy everybody's going to have problems after a game uh, you, you might get upset I might get upset but the bottom line is can we make it better for the next game and next year next uh, season so that's the focus for me and I know that we can do this uh, so let's see the next slide so and uh, most of you guys see this, David and uh, Austin see this. Uh, the big, most important thing for us, Gala, recognized nationally. Our boys got so much attention. Uh, some of our posts that is uh, connected with UPSL get uh, over 20,000 uh, views. Uh, we've never did, did, done this before in any other league. Even my you know, uh, youth soccer club, we have so many fans and so many leagues that we play in. We don't hit that. This, especially this picture, got so many views. It's insane. Um, they have the team of the week, and we're going to do the same. Team of the week. Uh, the kids are being recognized. And and it's it's amazing. Like, they seeing it from the player's perspective, they were so proud. They shared it everywhere. Oh, my, Cisa said, oh, I made it. Like, And then suddenly Cisa shared that. The whole African and Gambian community sh sh share, follow. They make comments. They make jokes about it. They, they did this. They did that. But like, it's going out there. So even this simple thing right here, like team of the week, player of the week, makes a huge marketing job for ourselves for the program. Uh, the total price money for this year coming up for the, the spring is $155,000 for different, it's not one team getting this, different prices, uh, but it's it's amazing amount of money that they're actually uh, giving away. They, they could easily keep that 100000 of it in the pocket to a leadership in the UPSL, but they're actually using a lot of this money to encourage teams to go to national stage and regional stage. It's a big deal. And I think this is a big money, and I know that they're planning to grow this money every year. Uh, from our team, this is a while back. Now, I think Nua Sise has uh, like 10 goals. I think Travis has five goals, and a bunch of other guys have a bunch of goals. 
But like the fact that this is in UPSL's national stage, our roster is there, our players, their stats is there, is a big deal. Uh, they are also connected, affiliated with not only U.S. soccer, but the FIFA Federation. So if we have players registered with us under UPSL and they sign a professional contract, now we have a chance to get uh, some money back from the FIFA organization for developing players. So that's a big deal, in my opinion, that could support the programs in the future in another way other than sponsors. Uh, you can read this yourself, this part. Uh, I love these, by the way. The, uh, it looks good on the jerseys. Um, and then the girls' women's program uh, announcement cash price for this year. The first year in the national championship is $10,000 for us. So it's it's not bad. It's not bad. I know David has a goal to make it all the way up there. Uh, Bellevue has very good talent. If they recruit like that, they might have a chance at that too. We will do our best to get there. But like the bottom line is uh, the recruitment, the marketing, all that stuff matters for all of us to be able to get to that stage and represent Washington State. You can see the contact information for Amer uh, in there. And that's the main guy in charge of the whole U.S. Uh, uh, women's UPSL side. So I would definitely highly recommend to meet him. Uh, we will be inviting him to our meetings in the future. Uh, he's a great guy. Um, look at the national stage top goal scorers. And one of our players are in there. Uh, international player, this is Flores. It's such a good thing for them to be recognized at the national state uh, from pro teams and stuff. And uh, UPSL is is one of the most visited sites, the UPSL's US website. And there is so much news about us, other programs. I've seen uh, little articles about Washington State. Uh, they made an article about me getting the job, uh, Gala joining and some of the other clubs joining. Uh, it just puts you guys in a national stage like that. It's, it's amazing. So uh, so that's what I have, guys, for today. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, $500 for the year uh, fee for the clubs. And then uh, for men's, it's $2,500. Uh, and then uh, for women's, this year is going to be $1,000 to enter. Uh, with a discounted price. And then uh, if you, dis uh, you know, register, I think, before December, they will give you guys a free kit, a jersey kit, uh, uniquely made for you. And I think we need to start registering as of uh, uh, mid-November to last couple of weeks of November. And the registration, I think, will be making things more clear for other teams to join as well. I think we'll make a point and I'll highly uh, recommend it. So uh, please ask away uh, any questions, any uh, concerns or any anything you want going to add to the, uh, the Women's League that we're trying to create. Uh, I just want to say work uh, closely with Austin. I think he's a great resource. He only recently was playing in the league and then he went over and helped as the sporting director for Sky in their first season and brought them to unprecedented success as a new team coming in and making the finals uh, as a brand new club. Um, he's got a lot of great ideas and really wants to push the women's side further. He part of coming over to Bell back over to Bellevue. He was originally with us was to help run the women's side um, because he was really excited about that. And Sky was not planning on starting one soon. So make sure you use him as a resource and, have conversations with him. I think you guys will be able to put together some great ideas for the women's program. Yeah. He's a great guy. I enjoy talking to him each time I, I see him. So bright young man. All right. Um, again? What's that what question that? again? What's that question oh, Austin. again? Austin. Austin. Yeah, Austin is uh, representing Bellevue for the women's side. 
problem. Do you guys have any other questions? Do we have, um, this is David, how, do we have any women's teams registered at all? Uh, none of us registered yet, but we are, I, I am, I'm going to be registering this week for Gala. And I'm hoping that everybody else is going to jump in and register because I want to get the free kits, by the way. So that'll be nice uh, because we share with the boys. So getting a third, uh, actually, we have three. Getting a fourth one will be helpful for us. Uh, and I want to get a cool design for the girls. So I want to get that in uh, as soon as possible. So um, I want to use that promotion. And I, I really uh, highly recommend you guys to do it. But like I said, uh, if you have any questions and uh, concerns or anything like that, Jan is available. I am available. Uh, Anastasia in the, the men's side is available. And, and Amir for the women's side is available. So I think to get into the league, the price is very good. And, and the fact that you still can go to national championship with this price is incredible. So I think it's a great opportunity for us to do it. But uh, we need we need to start registering. So none of the teams actually opened their registration yet. None of the leagues, even uh, the other leagues either. So I think we should be the first one to finish it. And then when people see that we are getting teams registering and getting in, and they are for sure announcing that they are playing UPSL, I think we'll be growing a lot quicker than what we thought. We'll get ours done. Um, Dodgy, what about that uh, team from Bonnie Lake? Weren't they interested? What's that? Um, that were in the Cascadia last year. They play men and women in the Cascadia. Uh, which one is? Are you talking about? I can't remember the. Is it? Uh, I, mean, I have goals, but I don't know Bonnie. Lake Not goals. No, there's another one. They were very interested in the, um, doing something when we I were talking about them. it last I'll, year. I'll contact them. I'll look. Yeah. Okay, I'll contact them. Uh, so, uh, are you? Uh, at this point, like I said, I'm going to stop the recording. I think the, all the information part is done. Uh, let's see. I, no, I have a question well, about. Um, so for for women, when when would we start? 